Seeing these giraffes from the air was really exciting. Seeing them anywhere is exciting because there's so few of them left. But this was my first shot and there's a giraffe standing in this small clearing by a small tree. And then the next thing I know, there's three. The next morning, I was informed that about 12 hours after we had seen these giraffes, there was a ranger patrol in the area that heard 10 gunshots. It was too late for them to follow the shots to find out where they were. They waited till the next morning, they went in the direction of the shots, and lo and behold, they found three dead giraffe in the area that we had been in. Okay, here's one caucus. Oh. That was horrible. It was horrible for them, it was horrible for me and the team, and the crushing realization that it's, it's most likely it was these guys, these ones that we'd seen. Um, and now there's three less, now there's 37. It was really awful. I was working in a very remote, iconic national park called Garamba National Park. Garamba is a park that is run by the ICCN, the Congolese government in association with African Parks, an organization that's responsible for the management of the park and the wildlife. It's a very challenging environment on the Congolese and Sudan border. The first thing you have to do is secure the perimeter. This is the front lines of the poaching crisis with a terrorist network and highly militarized forces surrounding us in every direction. This is a tough environment. Look how high this grass is. Patrolling these grounds, you're always at risk of an ambush. When you approach these animals through the tall grass, even though you can't see them yet, you know you're getting close to the carcasses because of the sound of the flies. It just starts growing and growing and growing. Sadly, in my career, I've seen poached elephants before at multiple stages of decay, but I'd never seen a giraffe. Who kills a giraffe? You know? Um, it was awful. Because of their size and their exquisite form, they take a particularly grotesque appearance when they're lying down contorted on the ground. This is a bull. You walk over to that carcass. That's a lot smaller carcass. Go and see what that is. That might be a female. This is a tragedy of epic proportions for this species, Cordifan giraffe, a unique subspecies. These are the last ones left in the entire region. Sad part, this is a female. Every single female that we lose is a breeding female that can produce more. On further examination, there's also some things you notice immediately, which is they didn't take any of the meat. All that they did take is the tail. We can now clearly see what, what happened. I think they were probably all shot at the same time. The first one in the brain, the other one dropped right next to the first one. And this one was shot multiple times as it was running away. You can see some shots next to the spine on the left and some shots from behind under the tail. This giraffe carcass is only 36 hours Old. What happened here was the poachers, you can see where somebody cut this open with a knife. So the poachers cut this open to give access to the vultures so that the vultures can finish this carcass within two days and we can't detect the, the carcass from the vultures. The longer the vultures stay around, the longer we have to detect it. So this one was, was the one that was collared. This was a giraffe that had a satellite collar on. That was crushing for the African Parks and Garamba team that was with us. 
because this is critical data that they've now lost. Just our normal anti-poaching strategy is obviously not working. This giraffe bull was collared. We've got collars on all of our giraffe groups to know where these groups are at all times so that we can follow them, we can shadow them and we can protect them and we're still failing. We've got five groups of poachers coming in here. Unidentified helicopters, we've got guys coming from the north, the LRA who are only after elephant, they need to fund their war. But then we've got the North Sudanese, the Janja wheat. The South Sudanese has got a market for bushmeat. They've got a bunch of refugee camps, um, they protein starved, and they would take the, the meat. The Congolese people don't touch the meat. They believe they get leprosy from, from eating giraffe meat. They only cut the, the tail and they will use that tail as a dowry to the bride's um, father if they want to ask for the, for the hand of a bride. So having the tails cut only probably indicates that these were Congolese poachers. Just the very little tip of it, the, the long black hairs that are used as a fly swatter, it's worth thousands of US dollars. The sad part about the, the history of Garamba is that we've lost the northern white rhino. And we're now about to lose the last giraffe if we don't get our act together and stop this poaching. Here is a purely military task. We're not after groups of two to three guys ducking in by night, taking rhino and getting out again. We're after heavily militarized, heavily armed groups with a specific directive. Come in, off take resources, get out. I think as a conservationist and as somebody that has dedicated his life to, to conservation in whatever form, um, this is disheartening. This is ripping out your, your soul. Yeah. Every one of these we find is just one more incentive, one more push just to go a little bit harder, a bit further. And there's never cease. Nous allons se mettre jusqu'au bout, jusqu'à ce que même si ils arrivent à tuer tous ces bétails, que ce soit des éléphants ou même des girafes, et qu'ils nous tuent, nous tous les gardent, et par après peut-être c'est à ce moment-là, mais je ne pense pas qu'on va fermer la sécurité de, de la lutte anti braconnage au sein du parc national de la Garamba. Je ne pense pas. It moved me to tears when I was out there. It, it brought me to tears again sitting here. It's really forcing me to reflect on this experience. I'll never forget it. I'll never stop being angry. I'll never stop feeling the, a duty to continue. But I also feel tremendously obligated to bring it back and try and utilize uh, the resources and the awareness that only National Geographic can provide. You have to turn tragedy into a galvanizing force. We have to turn tragedy into activism. Alert the world to the tragedy of what happened that day and find a new way to let it live on as a source of energy and momentum for all of us. They're Kenya police reservists. They're armed with automatic uh, rifles. They're trained to a very high standard. We've set up a dog section. Highly trained attack, stroke, tracker, stroke, patrol, dog unit. 